Then tell us about the daycare. Um, and it has Verdant Turf as optional. Verdant Turf is entirely optional, isn't it? Right? There's literally no reason to go there. Like, ever. There's another Megastone there. Doesn't tell me what it is, though. Okay. Oh, I have to take it to the Rustboro City guy, and he tells me what it is, because it's dirty or whatever. Cool. Um, I guess I'll write that down in my notes, just so I don't forget. So, optional. Route 117. And... Verdan Turf. You go through to get to the cave, or you get strength. Oh, that's true. Wait a sec, where do I get Rock Smash? I don't think I have it. Hold on a minute, let me read this. So Route 111 South. This expansive route includes a desert where sandstorms rage unceasingly. Rage unceasingly. I don't think I've heard that word before. And a mountain pass. Route 111 is located north of Mauville City and it's a unique path that splits into three sections by a mighty sandstorm. Is it in three? Oh, it is in three sections. Um, okay. The Winstraits house is there. If I beat them, I get the Macho Brace. Yo, it actually tells me the Winstraight family's house's team, but it doesn't tell me the Team Aqua Magma Grunts teams. Why? Chat, I don't think I got Rock Smash. I don't think it told me. Oh, Wally's uncle gave it to us? Let's find out. Oh, we have it. I'll give it to Oswald. You can forget Amnesia. It literally has like a page and a half just on the Winstraight family. I don't understand. The Winstraight families are a proud family of noble Pokemon trainers. Visit their cozy home on Route 111 and accept their challenge. You'll have to best all the four of the Winstraights in one go, battling back to back without any pause between battles to heal your team. After defeating all of them, make sure you go back to the house and speak to Victoria to receive a Macho Brace. This stiff, heavy brace Helps a Pokemon grow by giving it by giving their base stats a boost. Be careful, it cuts speed in battle. Okay. And the first turn has a Zigzagoon, and it says any fighting type move will knock Zigzagoon for a loop. Why does it go so in depth for this? <laughs> There's no reason to do this. Oh, and then it says to build an unstoppable team. Here are some recommendations to help you prepare for the win straights. If you even put a few of these Pokemon on your team and raise them to around level 20, you'll whoop the win straights without any worries. It suggests the Marsh or it suggests the Mudkip this time, but it didn't for Watson's gym at all. And if you don't have a Mudkip, it says to use a Tentacle with Bubble Beam. Gets it to level 25. And many draining poison moves. So we like got our HMs in newer games. Yeah, HMs gonna suck. Straight up. I'm just gonna write down. I'm gonna do the Winchester family too, actually, because it's just a lot about it. Alright, let's go over there. Oh, win straight. I swear also when I get a job. Oh, so never? I'm sorry, that was mean. Okay, round 111. Who's in the lead? Uh, I kind of want to level up Seto. But what does the guy tell me to do? It says to use rock type moves. 
more fighting type moves. I don't think I have either of them. So screw it. Just put you in the lead. Hello, win streets. Alright, this... How do I do this again? Was it Control X? Control X, that's how I speed up. Okay. Yeah, this we can just speed up. Yo, that just rocked me. I gotta switch. Let's go to Pikachu. It's kind of annoying though because it's going to send out my Roth's lead every time, so it's just gonna die probably. When I first found the Winstrike, that was hilarious that they were all named some sort of Victor. You know, I noticed his name was Victor. I didn't realize that yeah, it's Victor, Victoria, Vivi, and uh Vicky. So yeah, they pretty much all have the same name. Okay, this I outspeed. I can knock this out. I dodged. I did nothing. I'm switching. Let's go to Fangs. Wish they brought the Pikachu's back. That would be neat. They did a lot though. They have like these weird random forms that are just exclusive for one generation that never come back. They did it with the not cheered Pichu too in generation 4. And let's go is Pikachu having all these random moves that were kind of overpowered. Like Zippy Zap and Sizzling Sazzle, or whatever the fire one's called. A certain Heal Pulse, no thank you. Yo, fun fact about the move Heal Pulse. Heal Pulse has Pulse in the name, but doesn't do any damage. There's an ability, I forget what it's called, but um, Craw not Crawdon, uh, Claudzer gets it, that boosts the power of Pulse moves. So it technically boosts the power of that move, even though that move has no power. Did you know that? Crazy. Want to see a game theory on the Dark Lord of the Winchester family by Matt Pat? I don't know how much you could how much you could get out of that. Yeah, Mega Launcher. That's what it is. Also an Encore. No, thank you. Remember the first time I ever battled the Winstraits? I was like, I can't heal, I'm gonna lose. I thought it was like so hard, but it really isn't. Alright, this is the last person. It's the grandma. Why is my route so weak? Oh, now it's dead. Cool. Alright, let's go to Marshomp. My best Pokemon, just, just win. There's nothing creepier than reading horror books late at night. I've never done that. I've never read a horror book. I feel like when it comes to like horror as a genre, it's hardest to convey that through a book. Or maybe it's easiest because you can just imagine. I don't know, dude. That's a pretty deep question. Remember when I was younger, I feel like horror movies came out so much more often. That's when like The Ring was coming out and Saw. And I feel like those are two of the highest, uh, those are two like the most popular ones. Probably depends on your mind's eye. Yeah, that's true. Like how you imagine it. You know what's crazy? There's some people who like can't imagine things basically. Well, that's probably the worst way I could possibly put it. But they can't like picture things in their head. So for example, let's say I say like Apple. You probably like see an apple in your head, right? Some people just don't. I don't understand that because, like, okay, if if the it's called a f a fantasia, I don't think I said that right. But people who have that condition, right, 
they, if I say like describe an apple to me, they'll still be able to say like, oh, apples are red, round, whatever, stuff like that. That's what I understand. I already got this, didn't I? It just boggles my mind. Oh, you've seen Applin? True. Gabby and Ty's Pokemon. Newsflash, this dull battle against Gabby and Ty can be won easily with fighting type moves. Both of their Pokemon are vulnerable to these attacks. Magnemite can also be wiped out by just about any ground type move, leaving only Whisper to deal with. And then keep traveling north of Route 111 and you'll soon encounter a Mighty Sandstorm. The storm's fury proves to be too much for you to pass through. You'll need to find something that'll help you deal with the swirling sands before you can explore further to Route 111. For now, simply head west to Route 112. Route 112. This route is popular among trainers because it offers the chance to stroll while gazing at Mount Chimney. Apparently I say chimney weird. I've, I've been told that multiple times in the past. Chimney. I don't know. I can think of images, smells, and even textures vividly. You're pretty sure you have hyper. Fantasia, which is like the opposite. Yeah, I don't know. So my girlfriend works for a PT clinic and one of her patients doesn't know things anymore. Like if you say what color is yellow, the patient will laugh awkwardly. Uh, I don't believe you, Ollie, because um, you don't have a girlfriend. Straight up. That's the most unbelievable part of the uh, story. My girlfriend has seen the see, same thing. I don't believe you. Don't believe you. Anyway, Route 12 lies at the foot of Mount Chimney and features a cable car service to a summit. A valuable nugget can be found on the route's west hills, but you can't reach it until you've descended from the mountain. I have ADHD, so when people want me to picture something, I can't picture it for long before I mind yourself. Well, you can still picture it, though. So that's something. Oh, we get strength here. Friendly face greets you on Route 112. It's May slash Brendan. Enjoy the magn magnificent view of Mount Chimney with your friend, who graciously restores your party back to full health. And that's not all. May slash Brandon hails you HMO4 strength. A powerful move. Okay, cool. Uh, and then go to the fiery path. Oh, I forgot to put my bookmark in. Wait. I have to mark where we started. Can you guys hear the page flipping, by the way? Is that annoying? Should I move the mic when I do that? Okay. Let's go back up north. Is there going to be a Geodude here? I feel like there's always a Geodude here. There's a Geodude here. Level 13? Weak. Pathetic. Um, I guess we could speed things up on this route too. I think this is the worst route of all time. It's so weak. Wow, I just died. Isn't that great? What nature is it? I don't know. I'm just going to lead with Marsh Stomp from now on. And just let it soak up EXP share. I was doing a Sapphire and Nuzlocke and I found a shiny Wurmple and had to kill it because it wasn't the first encounter. Like 20 minutes into the game. Feels bad, man. I remember one time I found a shiny in a video. It was a Mankey in a Fire Red video and it was a Nuzlocke so I couldn't catch it. And the comments were so mad that I didn't catch it. They are like, bro, I know you can't use it but you should have caught it, it's a shiny. I don't think they realize that like I play on emulators and like once I beat the game I just never touch that safe ever again and I can't transfer that Pokemon. But like why would I catch it and then just proceed to never acknowledge it ever again in my life? Oh yeah, Shiny Claws. I like Shiny Claws but it was a Pokemon I already had. Like I, like I already had a Mankey on the team and then I found a Shiny Mankey. So like, you know, at that point. To me, emulator shinies don't count. Yeah, I agree. It's like, whatever. I found... Oh, hey, Zubetsy Bowling. 
Uh, I found that shiny in a video, and then in the collab video with Flygon HG, I found a shiny, I think it was an Elekid or Elebuzz? Electabuzz? I can't remember. No, was it an Electabuzz? It was Victory Bell. Or no. Um, Execute. It was Execute. Those are the only times I found shinies in videos. Two times. Oh, sorry for sitting for a shiny starter, and after 100, I ran out of patience. Yeah, I can never do that. There's been a lot of, like, weird animosity towards people who do that, I've noticed, though, and I don't understand it. Like, I don't know if they're joking or not, because I think it's not funny. So <laughs> if they are joking, they're doing a bad job. But, like, a lot of people, like, for Brilliant Diamond, they were doing, like, shiny resets for their starters, which is, like, you know, whatever. People do that. And then people were, like, mad. They're like, bro, play the game. Why are you resetting? It's like, who cares? I just want to get a shiny. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Why are you mad? And then that happened with Legends Arceus, too. Because people were soft resetting for a starter. I just don't get it. Worst part is even catching. It's cleaning out my... Oh, clean out the box. I feel that for when I used to breed a lot. I used to just put them in Pokemon Home. Or Pokemon Box at the time. Whatever it was called. Because it was X and Y. And just never look at them again. Do you have more collabs with Flygon HD? Yep, we're doing one right now. No idea when it's going to be finished though, but it's going to be awesome. Stars and Arceus are shiny locked. Okay, maybe it wasn't Arceus, maybe it was just Brilliant Diamond, but still. Yeah, bang, that's what it's called. Just with the Pokemon how they want it. Yeah, I agree. I don't know, there's like... I, f I feel like people that troll shiny hunters like that are legitimately just trolling. Because sometimes shiny hunters get really mad at stuff like that, randomly. Because there's those shiny hunters that are like, if it's not full odds, it doesn't count. It's like, okay, buddy. And there's shiny hunters who's, who are mad at people who put shiny reaction in the title of their video. And then they put like, Pokemon Omega Ruby shiny routes after 297 attempts as the title. And wonder why nobody clicks on it. And why they click on the epic shiny reaction routes, OMG. Like that's a much more clickable title i don't know i'm just i'm just kind of venting for no reason about stuff that doesn't matter <laughs> i should just stop before i get in trouble shiny elitist kind of scare me yeah that's kind of what i was getting at see it's never really like youtubers or streamers that are like that though it's always like the random people who just play pokemon for a regular hobby and not because they make content out of it dude imagine doing that that's so cringe Imagine I'm doing the exact thing that I just said I hate. <laughs> Dude, imagine playing Pokemon and not just streaming it. Y'all are weird. How am I level 27 already, by the way? I feel like I'm overleveled. Saving a bunch of stuff to roll with in a gacha, and I want to do a clickbait video or I just do a bunch of rolls. Yeah, don't title it gacha game title here. 400 rolls. Title it like epic gacha. Wow. I got a super legendary gacha. I don't know. I don't really play gacha games. Unless Duel Links counts, which it kind of is, I guess. I used to play one a lot though. <gasps> it's evolving. Let's go. I used to play a gacha game called Sega Heroes, then it got shut down. RIP. I think about it every day. I was obsessed with that game. This is a regular Omega Ruby playthrough. I am playing it by following the strategy guide exactly as it says. Whatever it tells me and how it tells me is how I'm doing it. Do you play Master Duel? I do. Well, I did for like a week. And was like, wow, this is just outdated Yu-Gi-Oh! with a different ban list. And stop playing. If you like to make Pokemon videos, you need a new angle now. Oh, 100%, I agree. I agree. Because, like, there's people who, like, they're like, I'm going to be a YouTuber. And then they upload, like, I'm not even joking. Pokemon Omega Ruby Nuzlocke Episode 1. And, like, that's the title. And they wonder nobody watches it. It's like, come on now. It's not 2015. You can't, you can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. 
Like, you gotta, you gotta do something different. Because I always see that, and it just, like, annoys me. Like, it annoys me at how people don't realize what they're doing is just not a good idea. But, anyway. <laughs> uh, brave the fiery path. May slash Brendan hurries to fall over town, where she slash she hopes to meet his slash her father's friend, Professor Cosmo. That's just throwing every pronoun in there. I love it. Uh, explore Route 112 and eventually leading up to the cable car station. What's this? That rotten team aqua team <laughs> that rotten team aqua slash team magma guarding the station is keeping you from taking the cable car to Mount Chimney. You'll have to find the roundabout near the Fari Path. Okay. I'm doing that lol, but I also don't care about views. Fair enough. Putting up edited videos of my Arceus streams. There you go. Uh so Fiery Path. The Pokemon that live in this area can use the steam that erupts from the ground as sort of a bath. Who asked? What? Uh, the sweltering tunnel through the base of Mount Chimney is filled with Pokemon that thrive in the heat. The far right path leads to top of Route 112, but the strength move is needed to fully explore the oppressive passages. So we can't, we can't use strength outside of battle yet. Uh, let me just write far right path in the in my notes. There we go. Now let's keep going, shall we? There's a few cool Pokemon we can catch here, I think. There's Grimer, Torkoal, Coughing, which we ran into. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna catch anything though. I don't think I need anything. Is there a strategy for Legend Arceus already? Not that I know of. I actually looked Yesterday, the day before, for strategy guys. Uh, and you know what I found, which was really weird? I found for Brilliant Diamond, like these really weird unofficial strategy guys on Amazon. And I might get one. They have horrible reviews. They're not like official at, in any means. But they seem really funny. Just bought tires this month. Guess how much they were? Like $800. Isn't that how much tires normally are? Like 200 bucks a tire, roughly. That would be a good video. I think it, it would be like an intended video but with an absolutely terrible guide. LMAO, 1756. Aren't tires like 200 bucks a tire? Why are they so expensive? Okay, Route 112. Harvest some berries on the hill. Don't mind if I do. All right, this is Route 111. Wait, why is it showing Route 11? Oh, this way. I'm confused. Oh, it wants me to backtrack to Route 112 to get the berries. Why? Okay. Anyway, mine were 350-ish, and then installation and disposal fees. Wait, hold on. They charge you to dispose of the old tires, which they probably reuse and resell anyway. That's crazy. That's a pop five raccoon. They just say hashtag. Yes, hashtag. I agree. This is where we get secret bases too. Oh, the secret base guy has a name. His name is Arun. I think that's how you say it. There's two A's. It has a lot about the secret bases. You can find other people's secret bases. Get decorations. Stuff like that. Where to find them. Wait, what does it say here? So it says, use the mock bike to reach an elixir. Did you spy that item up on the east cliff? The mock bike, the mock bike is your means of reaching it. Ride your mock bike up the slippery slope to the north, and then loop around and grab the item. It's an elixir, which can restore 10 PP of all Pokemon's moves, so it's worth the effort. All right, I'll do that. Thanks, guide. I wonder how many pages there are until the next gym battle. I feel like there might be a lot. Because we have to do like the Fall Arbor stuff. And the Team Magma stuff. And the Mount Chimney stuff.
Oh, it's only about 20 pages. Yeah, because ideally I want to get the fourth gym match today. That would be pretty pog champ, wouldn't it, chat? And originally I was gonna try to release this video, like the full video, this month. But I don't think it's gonna happen, so it'll probably come out in March. And you know what's crazy, chat? It's been two months since the last intended video, and the channel's still doing really well. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. My brother and I used to duct tape a pen to our games and let it sit overnight. Oh, I, I missed your first message. Yeah, so you would use that exploit to count as a step for the daycare. I used to do that in uh, in Pearl. But then something happened and overnight, I guess it slipped. So I like barely got any levels. Although to be fair, in older Pokemon games, they made it so hard to get level 100. And you like had to get to 100 to do some like Wi-Fi battles and stuff. Because it didn't auto scale levels. So it was either you were level 100 or just under leveled. Oh, it wants us to rest at the house here too. Oh, and it says new species of Pokemon hide in Route 113's ashy grass. I think we should catch something there then. I remember fighting 300 Basculin to max my Poliwag speed and then the game after had super training. I never EV trained in black and white, I don't think. I, I did a lot on um, uh, Hard Gold Soul Silver though. Yo, buy followers, primes, and viewers? Dude, thanks. I'm totally gonna do that. Oh man, my mouse slipped and I banned you. Wait, how did I send out a gold bat? Did I get like reversal or something? Or circle throwed? I think circle throws the move I was thinking of, not reversal. You're looking for the band button. Senna, are you on mobile too? Because I have this problem where both of my mods are on mobile. And that's... Mobile mods just don't work. I'm sorry. I need a PC gamer to be a mod. You know who's not on mobile? Me. Mm. Ollie, aren't you the one who was watching my stream while you were driving to Los Angeles to like meet a girl or something. Was that you? Or was that somebody else? I honestly don't know. You're on piece of work on an emote commissions? Wait, you make emote? Did I get- did you make my emotes? Who made my emotes? N made most of my emotes. Wait, I think N made three of my emotes. And then, uh, one of Emmy's friends named Worldly made the Swalot one. Who made the Score Bunny one? Did you make the Score Bunny one? Oh, you did it. I don't remember who made it. I feel terrible. I was listening to you on my phone, but 9% of the time on my laptop. Okay, maybe maybe I'll mod you, Ollie. We'll see. Okay, there's Secret Power. I, I like unironically need to like make a mod application form. I'm gonna do it one day. We actually have to go in. It's way easier to navigate for me on mobile because that's how I was introduced to Twitch. That makes me feel so old. Oh my god. Well, dude, when I was introduced to Twitch, I don't think there was even a mobile app. It was 2010. I made, I think it's September 1st, 2010 is when I made my account. If you click on my name, I'll have to type in chat first. Hi. If you click on my name, it'll say September 1st, 2010. 
Dude, my account is nearly 12 years old. My account is almost old enough to be old enough to make an account on Twitch. That's crazy. What do you say when you're happy? Oh, you already know. Pog. Whistle. Pog. That's good. <laughs> I got the NPC to say Pog. Let's go. Dude, this NPC is a gamer. Although I remember I wasn't like super in to Twitch until like 2014 when Twitch Plays Pokemon started. And that's when I like started streaming too. And then like for a couple of years I just didn't like ever go on Twitch. For like literally like two plus years I like very rarely went on Twitch. And then in 2019 I started streaming again. And then I stopped streaming for like a year. <laughs> I have a bad habit of doing that chat, sorry. Uh, And then like the summer of like 2020 I'm on Twitch every day bro. Literally every day, I'm either streaming or watching a stream. I have a problem. I'm in way too deep. Although you're gonna say subscribe, TBH. Yeah, subscribe. Do it. Imagine not being subscribed. That's so cringe. Cannot be me. Because Twitch subscribes yourself to your own channel. <laughs> I was mostly on Twitch for a YouTuber I lied because he has game nights on Saturdays on Twitch. Oh, that's cool. That was like 2011. Damn, you're old. Dude, Twitch was so different back then. Actually, I take that back. It really wasn't that different. Like genuinely, it really, like, it really wasn't that different. I think as a streamer, it's changed a lot. Like as a viewer, it really hasn't. Watch me a lot during online school last year. Did you fail online school because of me? That'd be kind of funny. There was an accident outside my office window. What? That's not good. I just heard sirens too. Uh, how do I get on my bike? How do I... I guess I didn't register it? One person told a Hollow Live member he was watching her while skipping class, so she ended the stream. That's based. You got straight A's? There you go. Wait, what button is select? Oh, there we go. What was that? Oh, thank you super for the raid. I changed the sound and I didn't know what that was. But I appreciate it. Welcome, people. I'm playing Omega Ruby and I am following the strategy guide exactly. Um, I know it's scuffed. Don't judge me. But, um, follow. Smile. I'm currently near Fallover Town. Welcome. Okay, and it's- I know it's super awkward because I can't really show you guys the book. <laughs> um, but trust me. It's cool. I swear. Okay? <laughs> Alright. So we just finished the rest stop. We got the elixir up there. Because the guide specifically said to get the elixir. And we harvested those berries. Uh, and I'm going to go to Route 113 to find Pokemon in the Ashy Grass and meet up with May slash Brendan. Read us a bedtime story. I got you, chat. Okay, so next task. Search the soot for hidden items and trainers. Route 13 features thick piles of ash and soot. Run through these dark piles to send the soot flying and potentially reveal some buried items. But be ready for a battle, as sneaky trainers pop out of the ash instead. And there's a tip. Try to catch a couple of Spinda while you're exploring Route 113. Having them come in handy later. Wait, how would having a Spinda come in handy later? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, if you don't know what this is, I make videos on it on my channel, Exclamation Point YouTube, in the chat, if you want to see it. Uh, and I beat the game using the guide exactly. 
and I started streaming it recently. And I'm, I have notes up too. Like, think of this as more of a you're watching me make a video rather than me streaming. Because that's why it's that's that's my excuse for it being scuffed. So right now in my notes I'm just writing uh, catch spin does because it told me to. It might just be exclamation point YT, Sunny. I could I don't know. You'll figure it out. You're smart. That's why you're modded. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Uh, and then tells us they got like a suit sack. Which I never really used. But I'm pretty sure you get them just by running around. Oh wait, this is a flying tight. I cannot just spam bulldoze. Don't you just get- you just get flutes from this, right? Did I die? Oh, that was the Wingle. Yeah, you just get flutes. Or- or desks, randomly. If you have 8,000 grams, you get an elegant desk. I don't know what that looks like, though. But it's your secret base. Right's bananas are suppa yellow in your notes? Uh, no. I will not. Why did I rock slide that? You know what, let me just- let me just do that. We'll just go fast for a minute. Let's just murder everything in sight. Alright, I'm gonna go heal, and then I'm gonna go catch like three Spindas, because the guide says to catch multiple. And last I checked, three is more than one. So I'll do that. Is going fast in the guidebook? Listen, shut up. It's- you know what? You got me there. You got me there. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Dude, I just have a... My uncle works at Nintendo, okay? That's how I got this 3DS that can go fast. And also happens to be connected with an Xbox One controller. Uh, but yeah. Trust me. <laughs> it's a 3DS dev kit. <laughs> okay, let's get some spindas now. Because it specifically says to get multiple, and having them will come in handy later. I don't know what it means by that. Maybe there's like an in-game trade that I don't know about for a Spinda. But I am legally obligated to catch multiple. Well, actually, it says a couple, so two is fine. Your uncle's Miyamoto? Yes. This is all about Spinda having different patterns? It didn't mention anything about that, though. I catch all 9,000 patterns. Are there really 9,000? You know, such a cool Pokemon, and they're, or sorry, such a unique Pokemon, and they gave it a sort of lame. What am I trying to say? Such a unique feature for this Pokemon to have with the different spots, but they gave it such a lame Pokemon. Like, who cares about Spinda, bro? Nobody. More like 4 million? Really? 4 million? You know, one funny thing about Spinda is it has a... It has 60 base stats, or 60 stats in every... It has 60 in every stat, like attack, defense, whatever. And if you add them all up, it's 360, like a spin. I thought that was cool. Maybe the guy thinks spin is legendary Pokemon? Possibly. Alright, then it just takes us to Fall Over Town. So we can just go through these battles. Gook says 4 million or 8.5 million. That's a pretty huge range. Did they change it between games maybe? Like newer games have more? Imagine the art designer who had to make all 4 million designs. It's gotta be some sort of randomized, like automated program that they made. There's no way they, they handmade 4 million. Oh wait, there's a TM there. 
Did it say anything about the TM? Wait, I don't even think this TM is labeled. This is Route 113, right? Oh, no, it is labeled. It doesn't say what it is. Oh, it's double team. Because they have it labeled in yellow, but then the list, it's not highlighted in yellow. It's, just, it's a blue. But yeah, it's definitely double team. I love the ones that look like hearts. Me and my friend have one that looks like there's a bow on its ear. That's cute. Does it keep the pattern if you transfer it to other games? Like if I catch one in Ruby version and then transfer it up to Diamond and Pearl and then to Black and White and so on and so on until I get to Sword and Shield. Or maybe Legends Arceus. I don't think you transfer Legends Arceus yet though. Whatever. Will that work? Like would it look the same? Or would it change? I'm curious now. You know what's funny too? You could technically do that. Like you could catch Pokemon in Ruby version and transfer it all the way up to Sword and Shield, but it'll take you so long. Because you can't skip games. You have to go in order. Gotta go from Ruby and Sapphire to Diamond and Pearl to Black and White to Black and White 2 to X and Y. And then actually, I think you could skip Sun and Moon. Because you go to Pokemon Box or Pokemon Home, whatever it's called. And then Pokemon Home, you could go... So basically, you could go from Gen 5 to Gen 8. You could skip those, right? Well, technically, you would be going to Gen 6 first. You did it in your Sapphire. I remember doing it uh, up until Gen 5, and it j it just took so long. And that was way back then. Doing it now because of the Ribbon Challenge. Oh, yeah, there's Ribbons that are only in Ruby and Sapphire, right? Yo, what's up, Dragon? Welcome. All right, so what's going on in Fall River Town? I kind of should have read this first. A town formed by scholars who gather to research meteorites. The rich soil surrounding the small town is primed for planting and gardening. Really? There's no gardens here, though. <laughs> what? Is that, like, supposed to be a joke? Uh, okay. Uh, Hohen's leading meteor mogul, Professor Cosmo, has built an impressive lab here, complete with a high-tech telescope. And tells us to catch up with May slash Brendan. They're interested in the meteorite. Well, Team Aqua Team Magma is interested in the meteorite, I should say. And we have to go and save him. Show me dragon or not Drago. Oh, I just, I thought it was dragon. Like dragon the, I'm just, I'm not going to say that. That's mean. <laughs> um, log on to the Pokemon centers to find someone's PC has changed to Lynette's PC. So that's whose PC you've been accessing this whole time. Hope she doesn't have any confidential information on there. That's a, that's a tip. Okay. And a bug catcher gives us honey. We get a berry blender in the contest hall. Get the blender. Uh, it should be you. There's a move maniac here too. Who needs heart scales, which we don't have. Oh, we gotta get Lynette's PC. Let me just write fall over town in the notes. Fall Arbor Town. How's your day going, my gamer? Pretty good. I have this big box of nerds candy, and I ate way too much of it. <laughs> it's just so good. I haven't had nerds candy in years. Although all nerds is, is it's literally just little clumps of sugar. It's terrible, honestly. Like, you shouldn't eat that. It's like, probably... Nerds are probably one of the worst things you could probably eat. I say probably a lot, don't I? I should not say it the same word twice in a sentence like that. I'm on a diet right now, and I'm literally so hungry. It feels bad, man. Wait, I gotta read what it says. Alright. Let me, just, let me just skim the next few pages to see what we're doing. Say Mount Chimney. Cool. Yeah, we'll probably get to Flannery today. 
Uh, we'll see, though. Uh, so Route 14, pockmarked by fallen meteorites. Pockmarked. Pockmarked. Covered or disfigured with pockmarks. Wait, so the description on dictionary.com for pockmarked uses pockmark in the definition. Thanks, Google. But it means like craters. Yeah, then just tell us to go through here. There is so much information here. Wow. Meet the fossil maniac. Get a TM from a guy who gives you roar. Harvest some berries. Go to Lynette's PC and get the C dot doll. Well, I guess for us it would be a uh, not a C dot doll. Oh, no, it would be a C dot doll. It would be a low tad doll in the other game. And then use Rock Smash to get a secret item. Uh, see May slash Brendan again, and then go to Meteor Falls. And there's a ton of tips here. I, I'm just skimming through this because it's like a lot of small things and nothing really stands out. Like we'll do it, sure. But nothing worth like putting in my notes. Hello, fossil people. Wait, is it you I have to talk to? Thank you. And then we get dig. I like this guy so far. It's pretty good. Like, it has some weird, random, funny things in it. And then it's it's also just, like, a good guide. Like, usually a lot of the guides are just, like, hilarious or just a straight-up good guide. There's very few that do both, I've noticed, especially newer guides. But this one's pretty good. What's up, uh, Ahalas? A holocyte? Am I saying that right? Welcome. Take a break from drawing and play Stardew Valley or something. Dude, I never played that game. But it seems so cool. I remember like way back. Like 2012, 10 years ago. Jeez, I'm old. Uh, I was friends with this guy. Still friends with this guy. Who's like a gamer, obviously. And like he wanted to do like a, some sort of like interview series or something. And he interviewed one of the creators of Stardew Valley before Stardew Valley came out. And I was like, I don't know if that game's gonna be that popular. And it's like a very popular game. <laughs> it's been out for like, what, seven, eight years? I really like Harvest Moon, so I'd probably like it. It's a, it's a similar style game, isn't it? Just like, yep, farming. So sorry, my old name is really hard to pronounce. So you can just call me Jinx. Okay, I'll try, but I might forget. Harvest Moon slash Story of Seasons is my childhood. I never really played many Story of Seasons games. I want to get one of the newer ones. One came out on Switch like a year ago. He was inspired by Harvest Moon and he made Stardew. Uh, the PS1 Harvest Moon game is the best. Back to Nature. It's pretty much the same thing as the N64 one. Just with a different map. Uh, but I think those are the best ones. Get the Mineral Town. There's a Mineral Town remake? That's the first one I ever played. Wait, chat, this is important. Harvest Moon Mineral Town. Switch Mineral Town. It's only on the Switch? Oh, how did I not know about this? Story of Seasons, Friends. Oh, yeah, they changed the name to Story of Seasons. I want to play It Takes Two. Been loving it. I've heard of it, but I never played it. The localization company changed? Why not keep it as Harvest Moon though? I don't understand that. Dude, I want this game. Is it available at my local GameStop? No, uh, it is not. It is not. F's in the chat. Wait, is it available new? Oh! <gasps> chat, there's one in stock at my local GameStop. I might go there tomorrow and get it. What are the odds that it sells by tomorrow? 
It's not gonna sell. Who's gonna buy Harvest Moon? Come on, bro. I'll go tomorrow. 30 bucks. No, actually, it was on sale. It's normally 40. Wait. I think I have, I have a gift card. So I accidentally bought a gift card. Well, I didn't. I, I bought the gift card purposely, but then I accidentally paid for it with my credit card when I bought something on GameStop's website. And it was like a $200 uh, gift card. <laughs> so I got to use it. I used it to buy Pokemon cards recently, but I think I still have it on. Here. Let's get a new one. Add to cart. Uh, chat, this is important. I'm sorry. I'm not getting the 299 plan to protect it. Wait, what? I have two in my cart. No, I don't want two of them. GameStop.com. I want one of them. Uh, Fangs wants to learn Swift. Hover Moon, Story of Seasons is always important. It is always important. All right, proceed to check out. Is this my account? For the right login? All right, I want to pick it up. Wait, can I pick it up tomorrow? Wait, I don't want to pick it up today though. All right, let's add my gift card. It's so scuffed though because it's not an actual gift card. I just have the number, so I can't use it in the store. Unless I want to give them like a 30 digit number to type in, which is kind of not nice. Look at that jacket as a champion logo. I'm trying to resist the unfunny joke. What's the unfunny joke, dragon? What is it? Yo, my gift card covers it. I still have $35 on this gift card to pay for this game. Wait, I don't want to pick it up today, though. Dude, I have $60 on this gift card left after buying Story of Seasons. That's wild. You think if I order it, I could just pick it up tomorrow? Like, will it be mad at me? Like, it doesn't specify. Very excited for you to get Mineral Town. Dude, I played the OG one on the Game Boy Advance. And my sister had more friends in Mineral Town. I think the only difference in it was you could be a girl. <laughs> the, only, the, only, the, the more friends was the one girl character they added. Harvest Moon DS and Harvest Moon DS Cute, that was just like, you're a girl. Yo, I got Harvest Moon DS for Christmas one year, right? Um, and this is when I was super into Harvest Moon, when I was playing Friends of Mineral Town. You know, like, new Harvest Moon DS comes out, I get it, I play it, I save my game, whatever. Uh, I go to play it again, and my progress was deleted. Oh, that's weird. Play again, save, progress deleted. I got like a defective copy that couldn't save. Maybe it was fake. I doubt it though, because this is when the DS was the newest console, so it wasn't as common to get fake games. Because I know that's a problem now. People get like fake Soul Silvers or whatever, and they can't save the game because it's just a fake game and for whatever reason doesn't save. So I, that like really upset me, and then I stopped playing Harvest Moon games. <laughs> because I exhausted Friends of Mineral Town and my Harvest Moon DS wouldn't slave. Is Pokemon Home a good option for storing Pokemon? Yes. I don't really use it anymore, but I did when it came out. And it was nice. Hey, 
Wingle down. I feel like in a Ruby and Sapphire, this area is much darker. It's like yellow in this game, but I think in... And there's also no huge crater here. But I think in Ruby and Sapphire, it's like brownish... Brownish gray. Wait, no, it has the protection plan in my cart. I don't want the protection plan. Get the protection plan out of here. No. How do I get rid of it? Do not want the protection plan. Sorry, chat. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still I'm still trying to buy this. I think I have to enter the gift card again. You have to enter the gift card again. I still have a copy though. The only thing I'm confused about is I can't- can I like buy it and then pick it up tomorrow? Because I don't want to buy it and then- and then be like, you never showed up. Screw you. I collect Pokemon ripoff merch and games too? Wait, why? Why do you collect fake stuff? Remember when I was little there was this store that sold fake Pokemon toys? And I had like a Vaporeon that was pink. And this was before shiny Pokemon were a thing because it's like, you know, the only games red and blue. So that was the coolest thing. But it was so like crappy and like it, the tail broke off. I probably still have it and it's probably in that closet right there. Yo, speaking of which, you know what I found the other day? It's Kyogre. I have like so many random plushes and Kyogre is like one of the coolest ones. Got a Groudon one, Latios, uh, Plusle and Minin for some reason. I, I don't really have room to put it behind me though. Like that, it's just so full. I also have Kirby riding Cobalion now. I don't know if you can see that. You have a Mirage Plushie. What do you mean Mirage Plushie? I meant Plusle and Minin. Unless you typoed and meant something else with Mirage. You need to get shells. Yes, shells are very good. You know what, chat? I'm just going to risk it and buy this tomorrow. Because I don't want to get screwed over by buying it today and not picking it up today. Oh, I should read this. Meteor Falls. Your frenzied pursuit of Team Magma slash Team Aqua has led you to Meteor Falls. This spacious cavern with rushing rapids requires the surf and waterfall field moves to traverse fully. This means your explorations for Meteor Falls are somewhat limited for the time being. Just put that in your notes. Or put that in your notes. Put that in my notes. What am I talking about? You guys don't have notes, do you? Uh, how do you explain to your parents that you're a YouTuber streamer? Uh, you just tell them, five head. Uh, go north and grab the full- I already did that without it telling me. I just knew it was there. Uh, so cross the bridge to catch up with Mei slash Brendan. She slash he has finally managed to catch Team Magma slash Team Aqua, but the bullies aren't about to let you rescue Presser Cosmo that easily. The time has come for you and your friends to kick him on in a multi-battle. No, I mean Mirage, Plushie, those fake discounted Pokemon plushies are worth lots of money. Oh, I never heard of those. Alright, so Team Aqua, Ma Team Aqua Admin Tabitha. Wait, that's Tabitha? I don't think that's Tabitha. Tabitha has two Pokemon and sends out one for the other. Work with Mace slash Brennan to defeat him. Along with Pokemon by Team Magma Grunt. Be advised that Numble won't take damage for electric moves. Mighty Animal will take damage for psychic moves. Yada, yada, yada. Yo, it refers to Tabitha as they. 
It doesn't say he. I'm pretty sure Tapith is a he. They updated his design. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> and then if you're playing uh, Alpha Sapphire, it's Shelly. Tabitha's a dude? They updated his design? I don't remember him. I, I do not remember him in uh, Ruby and Sapphire at all. Wait, wasn't this just Maxi in Ruby and Sapphire? So they just added this new character? For what reason? Probably to give him a Mega. He probably has some random Mega or something. Later on. No? No what? Oh, Tabitha was in the originals? I just do not remember Tabitha at all. He had a different design. Diamonds are given a bigger role in the remakes than the originals. Yeah, they did that with Heart Gold and Soul Silver too. Oh no, don't give up on Learning Spark. You can forget. I guess you're any kiss. Actually, no. Just forget Spark. Spark's not good on Pikachu. How about your Pokemon from White Up? You need to send them to uh, Black 2, I think, first. And then Pokemon Bank. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. I remember half of Gen 3, and then I don't remember half of it. Yeah, that's, that's how halves work. You were a Gen 5 kid? Oh, so what, you're like 13? Wait, who wants to learn hypnosis? Oh, spin. Why do I have a spin down on my team? Oh, I never I never wrote down spin down in my notes. Let me just put that here. Oh, no, I did put it down. Okay. Okay, they were defeated. That was Gen 5 Kid to you. I played it when I was like 12. Dude, Gen 5 came out, I was 16, 15. Yeah, 15. I love Gen 5 though. I was a freshman in high school when Gen 5 came out. Damn, dude, you're old. Even though I literally just said I was older, older than that, <laughs> but screw it. I started with Soul Silver, but it was too confused for me as a kid. So Gen Five was the first game I finished. Did you get stuck? after you got the third gym badge is that what it is i feel like it's, a, it's an easy place to get stuck uh, especially when you're a kid or maybe after the fourth gym badge somewhere around there like with the lighthouse and with you know not being able to get to the lake of rage until you get the badges and it's weird how generation two is laid out after goldenrod or with the Sudowoodo, like that's an easy place to get stuck. The Ice Cave. Yeah, that's, you can get stuck there too, but that's pretty late on. I often messed up in Gen 1 and accidentally skip a gym leader and get confused. <laughs> Wait, which gym leader did you skip? Would you skip Koga? Uh, does it say anything special here? It does. Um, so there's a few things we can do here, actually. Uh, we can go to Mauville City. Or we can take, we can go and explore Meteor Falls a bit more. Uh, or like, it's just a lot of like backtracking we could do, like swap your bicycle, get the other bike. Check on the daycare Pokemon, like whatever. Uh, we can just go to Mount Chimney now. 
The symmetry I didn't understand that I was supposed to do because I would do do because this was before I learned reading and I just pressed X like in Kingdom Hearts fans. <laughs> did I beat Pokemon Red as a kid before I like knew how to read too? I don't know how I did it. But I'm pretty sure it took me like well over a year to beat it of playing like almost all day every day. Because I remember playing Pokemon Red as a kid and I would just be like, today I'm going to go to Viridian City when I had like four badges or something. I just like go wherever I wanted. And like just run around the grass, be like, what Pokemon can I find here? Like I didn't know. Alright, so he's gonna take us to Mallville now. So let me just write down back to Mount Chimney. Times when I was beyond confused, going into the Pokemart in Fire Red before you get the Pokedex. Oh yeah, and you can't buy anything. I did the same thing in Gold and Silver, like why can't I buy Pokeballs? Uh, getting up the mountain in the cable car, that was kind of confusing because you had to go around it, yeah. And not being able to find the team in Saffron City. Oh, the T in Saffron City, okay, yeah. My brother also learned how to read because my parents were annoyed at reading cheat codes to him, so he learned himself. That's pretty funny. All right, I just want to read like the full thing about Mount Chimney, at least up until the uh, the battles. All right, so Mount Chimney, this volcano towers at a height of nearly five thousand feet. The view from its peak is beyond compare. Located in the heart of Hoenn, Mount Chimney is a monstrous volcano that sees with incredible power. Although the purpose isn't clear, Team Magma slash Team Aqua are intent. What's well, this is intent? But I think it should be R. Team Aqua slash Magma is intent. Team Aqua slash Magma are intent. I don't know which one's right. Probably is because they're the author and not me. <laughs> uh, is intent on bringing Professor Cosmo's meteorite here. Stop them and reclaim the meteorite. Cool. Wants us to go up north. Uh, it wants us to go around. There is a TM here. It is incinerate. And then we meet Tabitha. Okay, they need a new rating for games called E plus R. Okay. Alright, let's just go to Tabitha. Oh, for everyone who can read. Don't they have a game, like a game rating that's like rated C for children? Like that they use for like learning games and stuff like that? Because I distinctly remember th there was a McDonald's that had an N64 and they had a Sesame Street game and on the cartridge it said like rated C. Like for children. I could be wrong though. I played Dragon Tales Hide and Seek game on the PlayStation 1. There's a Dragon Tales game on PS1? I had no idea. I remember playing Spyro 2 a lot as a kid, but that game had voice acting, so not being able to read didn't matter as much. Yeah, EC, early childhood, which like implies they can't read. Because you're like three years old. I have a Sesame Street game for the NES like that too. Like I'm pretty sure it's rated EC. Okay, so if we go to the right, I think over here. Okay, not there. Maybe it's down here. There's a TM somewhere. Jack and Dexter's awesome. I played the first one. Actually, no, I think it's the second one that I have. I remember hearing about that game in like Game Informer magazine as a kid and then renting it. Did I rent it at Blockbuster? Or I think I bought it at Blockbuster. And it was like a Friday night. Dude, it was it was so lit. Played it on PS2. Where the heck is this TM? Oh, I can't go there yet. 
Why is it telling me now then, though? Because those grunts are blocking the way. Dragon Tales Hide and Seek is the name of the game. Yeah, never heard of it. I used to love Dragon Tales, though. Is that still on? Because I feel like that was one of those shows that was just on forever. If you Google EC Game Running, Sesame Street is one of the first to come up. Yep. Makes sense. It still airs. That's crazy. I know Arthur is like that too, but I heard that Arthur is... It's, it's either going into its last season or its last season's airing right now. I usually like Arthur a lot too. I think Cyber Chase actually still has new episodes. I used to love Cyber Chase. But I saw Cyber Chase recently and it's like CGI now. It's not like a regular cartoon. Oh, I'm not healed. Can't wait. Yeah, I don't know if they just changed the art style or if they straight up like rebooted the show or what. But it's so different now. <laughs> yeah, they still haven't saved Motherboard. After literally 20 years. Wait, it's CGI now, Cyber Chase? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. If you just look it up. Never enough math. Yep. Oh, I have to heal. Uh, good thing we have Soda Pops. And a regular potion just to top us off. Alright, let's save the game. And let's go. Hello, Tampatha. So what does it say for Tampatha's team? This time around, Tampatha uses Coughing and Nummel. They share a common weakness to Ground-type moves at a glance, but Coughing's Levitate ability makes it immune to Ground-type moves, so use Psychic-type moves against Coughing instead. Nummel is also extremely vulnerable to Water-type moves, but is not affected by Electric-type moves due to its Ground-typing. So we gotta go into Curlia, is what you're telling me, guide. I'm going to write that down, actually. Uh, Tabitha use Curlia. Yeah, writing out these notes actually helps a lot when making these videos, too. Like, I know it seems like I'm writing, like, super basic things, but uh, it makes it easier. You can't find it in CGI? Maybe I'm thinking of a different show, then. I'm just going to look up new... Cyber Chase. And then you go to Images. Oh no, I think I am thinking of a different show. I swear I, I saw it and it was CGI. Yeah, I must think of a different show. I actually have a clip from 2020, and it still seems like how it usually does. Oh! I'm just tripping. I'm gonna look up Cyber Chase 2022. Cyber Chase has been around for 20 years. His 20th anniversary was a couple weeks ago, I think, according to this random video. No, it is okay. You can. It is. It's not full CGI, but it's it's different. Okay, the art style is different. It's this is not how it always looked. It used to be like a straight cartoon, cartoon like looking. This one's this one's different. I don't know how to describe it. It's not, it's not like straight up CGI though. It, it, it's very close to the original, but you can tell it's different just by looking at it. 
Totally not drawn anymore and like made in Flash. Yeah, maybe. Like with Simpsons. I don't really know much about animation, but maybe. <laughs> yup words. Okay, Tabitha defeated. And now we fight Maxi. So you've beaten Tabitha slash Shelly, but the real threat lurks ahead. Heal your Pokemon and then finish crossing the bridge to find the leader of Team Magma slash Team Aqua standing near some sort of high-tech device. After revealing a bit more of his organization's far-out plans, Maxi slash Archie draws you into a dangerous battle. So no weaknesses are shared on Maxi's Pokemon, so you need to switch out your own Pokemon throughout the battle and adapt to the ones he sends out. Fortunately, all of his Pokemon have multiple weaknesses and can be exploited. Uh, show this worthy foe just how strong of a trainer you become. So he's leading with camera up, so I will lead with uh, Marsh Stomp. So Marsh Stomp and Pikachu basically just kill him. Okay. And then we get the Meteor, right? You know, I don't know if you get it in this game, but in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, you have to actually go up to that device and pick up the Meteorite. And I always try to do that whenever I play this game. Because then I'll be playing, I'll like be going farther, and I don't, it's like, it's you don't have the Meteorite, and I'm like, what? And I gotta fly back here and pick it up. So they could have just stole it because I left it. But I have a feeling in this game, they make you take it right away. I'll never understand how the platform is floating over a volcano. Wait, is it? I did not notice that. Hello, Maxi. Wait, he led with Mightyena. You lied to me, guide. Why do you have camera up first? Let me just write Maxi battle. There was a TM down in the volcano. Yeah, the guy mentioned that. You just couldn't access it until after you beat him. Because then the grunts clear out, so you can access it. Superior architecture in the Pokemon world? That is kind of true, though. Goes for swagger. Yo, next level plays, I am going to use a full heal. To heal my confusion. Never mind. I don't have a full heal. Wait, double never mind. I do have a full heal. So now we're basically plus one. What's up, Mr. Pickled Peanut? How are you? Okay, I think Marshomp just sweeps. Because <laughs> we're just plus one now. Yeah, whenever trainers use swagger, full heals are just OP. Because they're just literally giving you a sword stance and wasting their turn. I played Fortnite the other day, and honestly, it wasn't awful. Fortnite's a good game. Like, people make fun of Fortnite because it has like a lot of memes and stuff, but nobody makes fun of it because it's a bad game. Because it's it's genuinely a good game. Like it's fun. I played Fortnite a lot. Like, I'm pretty sure I have over 200 hours in Fortnite, which is kind of a lot. Okay, it's a gold bat. Yeah, let's go to Pikachu, why not? It's super effective. Catch this Electro Ball. That didn't do that much damage. I think that should be it. Are we with Team Aqua to drown the world in this playthrough? Yes, I am. Very true. I also want to learn Toxic. Uh, no thanks.
Fortnite is a good game. The concept of a battle royale was new and revolutionary at the time. That's why there's been a big move to again. Battle royale games during 2018. What ruined it were the players from the community. I don't really know much about the Fortnite community, but yeah, that is true. Like 2017, when Fortnite came out, that's when battle royales really started to get popular. Because like there was H1Z1 at the time, which was like the first big one from like 2016. Uh, and then like PUBG came out too. And there was another one. There was H1, PUBG, Fortnite. And something else came out around that time that was pretty popular. I just can't remember what its name was. Fortnite came out in 2017. Yep, 2017. And then a few months after, they released the uh, Battle Royale version, which was free. Like, people don't realize that. Fortnite Battle Royale is a sub-mode of an existing game called Fortnite. And it just became so popular and nobody cares about the regular game anymore. Oh, Raj feels dead. Yeah, I've heard. I haven't played it much. When it came out, I played a ton. It was so fun. Uh, but Overwatch 2 is coming out, right? I hope that'll be good. Alright, then next it has... Oh, this cutscene's still going on. It's one life mode that sparks something new. Being the last one standing was euphoric. People created that one feeling. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of like, like you look at like a game like CSGO, like similar mentality. Like you got one life each, each round and stuff like that. And then you just took that to like the next level. You ever played Overwatch? How was it? If you like respawn style shooters, you'd like it. But it's very different from like Call of Duty, CSGO, and like other popular shooters. All right, next we got the Jagged Pass. Laverage Town. Flanner. You know what I think I'm going to do, chat? I think I'm going to end now. Because there, there was kind of a lot to take in and write. Even though it's only been an hour and a half. Like, there's a lot of stuff that happened. Because we can battle Norman right after Flannery. And get two badges next stream. And still be on pace of the whole, like, one badge per stream thing. You know? Roughly. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that, chat. So I'm gonna end it there. What will next stream be? Probably Thursday. Yeah, probably Thursday. Uh, so yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you follow him, follow already, all that jazz. Uh, and I will see you Thursday, probably. So bye bye.